Welcome back guys. Let's check out the car's index or the car's structure. And probably you've seen already how it's divided the course. Maybe previously you got into the course or maybe you're already in the dashboard of the course. And I will show you what are we going to cover overall. Okay, so let's give it a look right here. The first point right here will be the course objectives. What's the overall objective of this course? The goals, the scope, and what are you going to learn after the course? And of course, how can you get to learn much more? Now, after the course objectives, we go to the introduction to Aspen Hysis and Aspen Plus. Essentially, we will be working with Aspen Hysis. We'll be giving a comparison between Hysis and Plus right here. And what's the main differences? And of course, also the versions. We got different versions, version 7, 8, 9, 10. Typically, I'm pretty sure you are already working with a version either 8 or 10. So we will show you the main difference between the versions, what's included, what's new, etc. Now, after we check out the overall introduction to the Aspen Hysis, we need to actually be using the software itself. So we start using the software, how to open a new software, how to get open existing simulations, the overall user interface, how to manage the ribbons, how to be working on the different menus, how to understand what's a simulation environment, the physical environment, how to get to them. And one of the most important parts, especially if you're a new user, will be how to get some help by yourself. So many times you will be modeling some simulations and then you got some problems and there's nobody there to help you. So we will be checking out the getting help by yourself, also getting help by online or if you have access to your Aspen support group as well, do it by that. Then we continue with the physical properties, which is right here. Physical properties is one of the most important environments we need to fill. Actually, it's the first environment that we need to fill up first. So we need to understand that we need to keep at least two points. The component point, uh, the component list, which is choosing all the components. At least one component must be present, for instance, water, or if you're using octane, benzene, or whatever chemical compound you are using, you need to set it up right here. And the second point will be the fluid package, how to model the, or let's say how to set up our universe once we choose our compo component list. And sometimes if you have some reactions, you will be filling them right here as well. Now that was the first environment. The second environment will be the simulation environment, which is essentially building up our flow sheet. The flow sheet is the place in which we add all the unit operations, we add the streams, energy streams, material streams, we connect them, we add all the input data on unit operations. So once we know the, that there are two environments that we need to fill up, we go to unit operations models, which is essentially covering all the unit operations that we need to understand, especially those that are in the common section, or I mean the most basic ones. Of course, you have plenty of unit operations, but in this course, we limit to the most basic ones. For instance, a pump, a compressor, a simple reactor, a conversion or equilibrium reactor, distillation columns, um, heat exchanger, etc. Now, once we actually set up our universe in the physical universe, physical properties environment, and we set up our simulation via flow sheet with all the unit operations and connections and streams, we need to know how to get our reporting results. So we need to know that Aspen Hysis has plenty of data and we need to know how to synthesize all that, especially giving results. Knowing the data that we are looking for, how to display it in a much friendly way, and especially how to manage that data. We can do it via Excel, we can do it via tables, we can do it via printable versions, etc. And eventually we go to the case studies. Of course, when we do some unit operations, we will be working with individual unit operations, but case studies is very important because 
we will be connecting the unit operations between each other. That is, we will start building up some simple processes and we will model a process. So this is, I think, one of the best and most common ways to learn is actually having a process and setting up the process, modeling the process and getting to know the results. We got three studies or three case studies. And then we get to this final case study, which is case study four. This is a exercise for you to work by yourself. I will simply show you the statement and show you the final answers. So you need to model it by yourself. And of course, you can get some help on the discussion board. If you have, for instance, you don't converge a distillation column or you are not getting the same heat duty or the same compositions in the outlet or product streams, you can check out here in the course. And finally, we give an overall conclusion on the course, what you've learned and how can you get a little bit more, uh, let's say, help or more information or how can you prepare more in further cases or further courses. So this is the overall index on the course. I hope you like it, guys. Good luck in the coming course.